Hello, welcome to the Compendium of Discomfort. My name is Michael, and um, yeah, I guess uh, I've been doing this stuff here, at least video wise, for about six months now. But it's basically a secret project, like the videos were published publicly, but I didn't tell anyone, so very, very few people watched them, but I guess this one will be the first that a uh, few more people might watch, I hope, let's see. But anyway, this one is probably the first one that will get uh, announced everywhere uh, where I'm present, like uh, Twitter and uh, so on. And uh, yeah, so I tried a little bit more elaborate uh, setups in the last few times. And I guess I should explain a little bit more what I've basically been doing all the time. I've got my structure, how I like to do um, reviews, and uh, I will better explain that and make it a little bit clearer so people don't get lost in the process, because usually I just talk my way through it and uh, we get to the end at some point when I start repeating myself for the hundredth time and uh, I know there's some kind of structure but people maybe don't know. So uh, this part is the intro. After that I will give you just for the people who want a rating without knowing every, anything I will give you a rating. After that we will do a little overview like what is this movie that we're actually talking about, uh, who is the who are the people involved and um, yeah, what happened here and uh, then I will give you some short spoiler free ideas for why I like this movie and then we will get to the biggest part, the, uh, <laughs> we'll get to the biggest part that's basically first why I like high school movies. And uh, then we will go a little bit deeper in some kind of an analysis, if we, if you want to call that. But uh, yeah, more details, more spoilers. I will spoil the whole end and everything. So uh, there's enough time for you before that to just go off and watch the movie. Because uh, yeah, let's start with the up ahead. I personally prefer a nice uh, five point rating bad and a very bad bad okayish good and very good there's no p uh, place for masterpieces because i believe to consider something a masterpiece we need a few years time and need to see how it uh, holds up uh, several viewings and so on so i don't want to give a masterpiece rating just after I watched a movie for the first time or so, and that's why I just don't do it in general. So if you want to know if I consider something a masterpiece, you have to watch the whole review. I'm very sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, just like I said, uh, to give you a rating without any other context. Easy, right? Um, it's a very good movie that we're talking about. But what movie are we actually talking about? We're talking about Sayonara Girls. Um, the original title is Shoujo wa Sotsu Yoshinai, so yeah, girls don't uh, graduate. And uh, it's a movie by Shun Nakagawa, who made one more movie before. This is another high school movie that I will review as well at some other point. I haven't seen it yet, but I hope it's as good as this one. It's called uh, Karancho? Karancho? I, I'm not sure. The uh, original is Karankoe no Hana, but I have no idea how to pronounce this, this uh, flower in English. No idea. But uh, another um, high school movie seemingly with an LGBTQ theme. Uh, theme and uh, I'm very interested to see that. It's a movie from 2022, it says here, but it got released, at least in Japan. In 2023, I'm pretty sure it was in uh, February. Let's see, yes, February 23rd. And um, 
I saw the posters and flyers and everything in the cinema. It was kind of interested, but I didn't watch it at the time. But now the time has come and I watched it twice in about one week. And um, that had, I highly recommend watching it twice <laughs> at least um, because it's way more fun if you want to call this fun um, the second time around. So, um, like I said, the director is Shun Nakagawa and then we have a very nice uh, cast. We have um, Yumi Kawaii, who I noticed first in the movie It's a Summer Film that played, I think, on the Nippon Connection where she didn't play the lead role, but like the lead role's best friend and uh, was very great and charming. And um, here in the uh, Kinema Junpo that uh, got released around the time, uh, there was three reviews. So quite good. It got like three, four and three out of five stars. So um, they consider three as a, like, yeah, it's, it's worth watching at once. Um, but uh, it's interesting that here in this review last year, uh, Miss Kawaii was already named as one of the central people in uh, Japanese acting. Yeah, and this year, I guess it's a big uh, breakout year because uh, now she made it to the cover of the Kinema Jumpo. Um, congratulations. Uh, and she, she did quite a lot of good big movies recently let's see um for example she made the amazing 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 anime look back where she voiced the main character she was in a girl named Ann, which is uh, pretty depressing and um just yesterday a desert of namibia started which which seems to be pretty good um, recently on the Japanese Film Festival online, you could see her in the lines that define me. And one of my favorite movies of 2022, she was in uh, A Man. Um, yeah, some other movies that you might have seen, maybe uh, Just Remembering or Plan 75. Uh, so yeah, she, she was in a lot of good stuff recently. And then we have uh, Rina Ono, who hasn't done that much. Her most famous movie is probably On the Edge of Their Seats, another high school movie about some girls who are watching a baseball game based on a theater play. So um, that explains why you watch them watching the game instead of actually seeing the game. But it's a very nice movie. And there's a basically sequel to that um, which was very good as well but can I find the title uh, something with a dry pool um, professional as usual let's see what we can cut here oh here swimming in a sand pool another uh, basically a movie based on another play from the same school it's a high school play and uh, yeah, similarly good. Then we have Tomo Nakai, who recently got pretty famous, I guess, because she was in Baby Assassin's 2 Babies. She was in Baby Assassin's Nice Days, and she's in Baby Assassin's Every Day that just started. I reviewed the first episode, and I like it very, very much. And uh, Nice Days will start soon in Japan. And uh, yeah, and she, she was in that movie as well. That is... Uh, what Shin Mai Kisha Toroko? Uh, I haven't seen that yet, but uh, I will soon. I'm very interested to see what's going to happen there. Um, then we have Rina Komiyama, who hasn't done that much. She was in a family by my not favorite director uh, Michihito Fuji. But the movie was okay, not Yakuza stuff. But she was in the very very good Worlds Apart by. Natsuki Seta, um, lovely movie. If you have the chance to watch it, you should. And um, <laughs> then we have uh, Aido Kobozuka, uh, not that famous so far, but he was in The Miracle of Crybaby Shotan, 
uh, one of the few Toshiaki Toyota movies that hasn't been released in the West, I guess, because it was a little bit bigger studio movie and uh, yeah, but I'm haven't seen it yet, but I will someday, and it's probably good because Toyota is always good. Now, if Himi Sato um, hasn't done that much either, but he was in small, slow but steady. You know the big, uh, great boxing drama from 2022 and we have Kisetsu Fujiwara probably the most famous actor in this movie because you know he's basically the only adult so he had more time to uh, actually do stuff so he was for example in uh, Scorsese's Silence or in his or in uh, Intolerance which was pretty amazing if Kuma Usa, who hasn't done anything I have seen. According to Letterboxd, uh, his most popular movie is A Man Who Defies the World of BL. No idea. No, I have Rin Marumoto, uh, similarly, hasn't done much. This is her most popular movie, and the same goes for Shima Tabata. Um, anyway, so far about the, about the cast. The original book, that's a Roman adaptation, was written by Ryo Asai, who has written the Kirishima thing as well, which I haven't seen yet, but is supposed to be very good, and he has written Abnormal Desire, which we covered a bit in our German language podcast. Uh, if you speak German, you can listen to the Compendium of uh, Compendium des Unbehagens, so the Compendium of Discomfort in English. Same, um, I think we talked about that uh, in the latest episode about the Nippon Connection, um, a great festival. You should go there. Um, yeah. Anyway, so that's our rough overview about the cast and crew. And uh, so what is this movie about? It's about the last two days of a group of students before graduation and their struggles with moving on. And yes, it's a very dramatic, depressing movie, which is luckily not completely free of humor. So uh, there's a lot of other stuff. Uh, to enjoy as well, but uh, yeah, it's very depressing. Um, like the, I, I prefer the Japanese title because it already tells you that these students don't really want to graduate, and to make things worse, the school will be demolished after their graduation. I think the idea is they will be fused with another high school. So this one will stop existing to make this whole thing even, yeah, more definite. <laughs> um, yeah, and then we have basically four groups of um, students, uh, always pairs, boy and girl. Some of them have another a female friend, but they're just there to give some more dialogue or uh, more context and stuff. So let's stick with the main couple. So we have Yumi Kawai and Airu Kobuzuka as uh, Manami Yamashido and Shun Sato. And um, she is supposed to give a speech at the graduation ceremony, which is quite uncommon because uh, usually another representative of the students does that. But because uh, her tests were earlier, because she went to a local nutritionist school, not a, a university, more, more like a semongako, uh, what is it called, a vocational school? Um, so yeah, d different uh, tests like entrance exams, so she's already done, so she was asked to give a speech and he is her boyfriend who she meets secretly in the science room to have lunch together and she always makes him nice uh, bento and uh, lunch boxes and uh, yeah, they're having a good time. And then we have uh, Rina Ono as Yuki Goto and Takuma Usa as uh, Kensuke Terada. And they're both members of the basketball club. And um, they're having a little 
fight going on. Um, first, it's sad that it's about the school building, which she believes should stay and he believes should be demolished and turned into a shopping mall or something like that. And somehow that escalated into a fight. Hmm. And then we have uh, Rina Komiyama as Kyoko Kanda and Himisato as Takeshi Morisaki. And she is basically the leader of the school's um, music club, not like an orchestra, but it's uh, always called light music, not serious music, like we say in German, like serious culture and a pop culture. Oh. Um, no, but uh, it's mm -hmm. basically bands. No, so they have a voting going on, like who should... Mm -hmm be the main act for the um, graduation ceremony, like this little culture festival, basically included uh, with some performances and stuff. And um, yeah, he is the singer of the band Heaven's Door that uh, is um, kind of uh, special because <laughs> it's uh, some, some kind of death metal band. And uh, yeah, that causes some trouble. Then we have Tomo Nakai as Shiori Sakta and uh, Kisetsu Fujiwara as Masato Sakaguchi. And here comes into play the only, basically the only adult in the movie. There are some others in like supporting roles like shop owners and stuff, but he is the only relevant adult cast. And he's responsible for the school's library. And she is a girl who spent most of her time at that library. So they have a little bit a special relation and uh, relationship. And um, she struggles with social interactions and he can um, understand her feelings because he was basically the same when he was at school. So, um, yeah, you can guess what might happen here, you will most likely be wrong. <laughs> anyway, that, that's the, the basic constellation and the movie is two hours long and is set in two days and the days basically share the whole runtime. And without spoiling anything, I would say that's why it's well worth watching the movie twice because um yeah because uh, the first day is still preparation for the ceremony and the movie basically does the same here it's preparation for the big bang basically in the second half and it sets up a lot of things that you will uh, understand later and that will make sense later and therefore yeah i i struggled to watch the movie at first like uh, i was in a mental phase where i couldn't really focus that well and i didn't really watch many movies if i watched movies i watched them at the cinema where i can't escape but this one I started and I started again and I started again. I started like three times to just get to the middle. And I didn't really... I, I mean, for me it's good because I always love high school movies. I can um, understand their problems. I get the ideas, but... Uh, yeah, it's, um, there still it still lacks a lot of um, things that may hook you. Yeah, it's because it's, it's a preparation, and the interesting stuff comes later. So um, when I watched it again, the first half was so much better because I know, oh my God, this already sets this up and this sets this up. A, like a heist movie that you really can just uh, acknowledge the beginning when you know what it's there for. And um, yeah, I, I heard from some people that they felt like it's a little bit too um, formulaic. But yeah, of course, a lot of these problems that the students have is pretty 
common stuff that you have uh, seen or heard in other stories and it's not that extremely special but I mean that's one thing I would call a genre because genre makes stuff from you lag and that's okay to follow genre rules or standards and um, tell stories that we have heard before because uh, basically that's what stories do they just tell variations of stuff that we know and that's part of why we um, feel something because we know I know the situation and for me this movie had quite a lot of situations where I thought oh yeah <laughs> I know this feeling and so yeah first first time I struggled a bit and then the second half when I finally watched it just completely wrecked me and uh, yeah it's uh, pretty great so the second time I watched it, I could enjoy it much much more and I would recommend it to you to watch this movie if you have a little bit interest in um, high school movies a little bit uh, nostalgia for things that you might not have like that because uh, for me uh, high school in that time I mean Germany has a different uh, system but uh, for me high school wasn't like that for the most part um, but anyway uh, it's a uh, there's a lot of nostalgia for things I haven't experienced as well, even though there's some things that I uh, understand. Um, yeah, so from here on, yeah, I, I would highly recommend to watch this movie. It's on Saka, or I mean, depending on when you watch this, uh, it will be there soon or it's already there. Saka is a very uh, interesting streaming service that uh, you should give a try. It's, available everywhere except Japan so I technically can't use it but I watched it anyway in Japan it's obviously available so uh, no problem here anyway so let's uh, dig deeper into this movie because uh, there's a lot going on that I haven't mentioned because I need to spoil so from now on uh, free for all spoiler party I will talk about everything I want and like uh, last chance to go to Saka and watch it before you watch this part um, they have a lot of other good movies too so uh, go go watch 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 everything um, yeah I'm not sponsored <laughs> yeah um, good let's uh, see um, what this movie is actually about and um, before I go back to this movie I want to talk about why I'm into high school movies especially Japanese high school movies because for me that's a very very different thing from for example American high school movies or German high school movies which are usually quite terrible because they have a terrible sense of humor and they usually need to be comedies and I really don't enjoy them and uh, Japanese high school movies are better. Um, what I think is always fascinating is especially this time limit thing. I mean theoretically you can repeat a year in Germany that's pretty common in Japan it's very very rare so usually if you don't ask your school can I please 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 repeat the year I'm so bad you, you will not repeat the year you will just graduate and be gone and uh, you're on your own and that translate translates especially to everything that's uh, somehow competition based like baseball baseball is a big thing here uh, not a topic in this movie surprisingly it shows basketball hmm anyway uh, usually for baseball it's a thing you have three years time to get to the big uh, tournament at Koshien and win the title and if you can't get it done in three years uh, you will never get the chance again so these movies usually feel very yeah what's the word they feel very um, 
definite. Like there's an end, there's a timer, there's a clock ticking and then you have to start your life basically as an adult. Yeah, and uh, that's one thing that I really, really like about these movies. There's usually some story about the last summer holidays, last time you can enjoy life and stuff. And after that, um, everybody will separate. That's the thing when you go from junior high school to high school. I have uh, quite some, some things about that time as well. And there at least you will stay with some people because yeah you spread out around that area not too far from home so you will meet some of your old uh, classmates again and uh, there's still some kind of connection there but uh, after high school it's all over you have to go somewhere and um, here in this one or in a lot of other movies this is set somewhere in the countryside. I have no idea what uh, town this is, but of course there's a, always the problem. Do I stay here or do I go to the big city? Of course, a lot of kids' dreams are is, uh, going to Tokyo. Yeah, you know, everything except Tokyo's countryside, even Osaka. <laughs> and um, yeah, so, so there's even more uh, danger of separation and never seeing these people again um so that's a big thing and um yeah these are some of the things that uh make these movies interesting for me another thing is of course nostalgia the good old school days except for my school days so um, the most part weren't so great so for me Every time I see movies or TV shows like this, I feel like, oh, I wish I could have gone to school in Japan, even though it's probably pretty hellish for a lot of people and not as fun and nice as in the movies. But I would have loved to uh, go to a Japanese movie or TV show high school where uh, everything is exciting. <laughs> No, but, but that, that's something where I feel nostalgia for something that I never experienced. And, uh, yeah, because it is very different. For example, in, in Japan, you have these culture festivals, you have sports festivals, and the students are actually looking forward to it. In Germany, especially the, um, the sports event we call Bundesjugendspiel, it's, it's horrible. Most most kids just suffer because... And, you have to run and jump and you get compared to others and, and here they actually seem to have fun especially with the culture stuff and this uh, club activities and all these things i, I love that um, another thing that i loved before i loved japanese high school movies was a boarding school movies and uh, their recommendation uh, recently uh, there was a new anime that's called the colors within about uh, a, a, a Catholic boarding school in Japan. I think uh, some. Oh, I forgot what town it was. Uh, they they showed the commercial for the town. So something a coastal town like uh, every city in Japan. Uh, but it's a movie by Naoko Yamada who made a silent uh, voice and a K on and a little bit of uh, Harui Suzumiya. And it's a lovely movie uh, about music as well. Um, yeah, that's another thing. I love music films, so this one gets some extra points for including music, especially for including metal. <laughs> Very bad metal, but it's, it's fun. Um, anyway, yeah, that's a little bit why I love um, high school movies. So let's dive deeper into the story and uh, one thing i found several times people complaining about i think one was here in the kinema jumpo review and i saw it in some other uh, things as well was that these um separate stories weren't really connected and i felt like um that's not really true <laughs> Yeah, like um, I I will, I will have to get to get back to this point uh, later. But um, I mean the, the original book seems to be short stories that are quite separate. But here, except for the basketball club uh, 
kid's story, which is more thematically um, connected to the others. I think the other two stories have a very clear connection to the main character, if we want to say so. So I don't get this criticism. So, so let's go a little bit into the main four storylines. And um, let's start with the basketball club couple who had a fight about whether or not the school should be demolished or stay. And it seems like a little bit stupid idea to fight over these things. And after a while we understand that it's not so much about the building, but about her leaving uh, the city while he wants to stay there, like deciding actively deciding to uh, be in a completely different um, city, a completely different part of the country and basically um, by default deciding that this relationship is more or less doomed. And uh, yeah, that's a very definite and uh, for, for me at least relatable thing. I mean, I moved to a different country. I left uh, some people behind. Yeah, not so great. And uh, so th that's a very interesting aspect of the story. Like, what do you decide? Where do you go? Do you stay with your friends or your partners or your family or? Do you decide to go somewhere to do what you want to do in the place uh, where you want to do it? Like many people say, oh yeah, you can just study anywhere. If it's just about studying, why don't you study near here? And um, yeah, but, but she for some reason feels the need to go to Tokyo and uh, study there. And um, yeah, I, I can very much relate to that. And uh, yeah, it's a very interesting story that comes to a very um, nice end. It's not overly optimistic, but less uh, depressing, let's say it like that. And then we have uh, Tomonakai and Kisetsu Fujiwara, so the library girl and her teacher. And here, of course, the potential danger is that uh, there's some kind of a love story between a, an adult and an underaged girl. And at least the movie makes the suggestion that she's a little bit, uh, that she has a little crush on him. Like she, in the one scene, she looks at his wedding ring and, um, yeah. And, uh, but um, there, there's just nothing going on. He doesn't take advantage of this. So no danger here, but uh, yeah, it's, it's something very interesting, like this one student who can't really connect with other students, but has this connection to one teacher. And uh, yeah, he tries to help her to change her life and uh, somehow succeeds, but then the big problem in the end is that now she changed herself at least a bit and can appreciate being a high school student more but now high school is definitely over like there's nothing for her to do about it and uh, she is forced to move on and that's uh, somehow nice and somehow really depressing and uh, yeah, it's another very common thing. Just when you start to learn to like something, it's over and you have to move on. And um, yeah. And then we have this um, music club story about uh, Rina Ono and Takuma Usa. And here, the big issue is that for the big cere ceremony, yeah. Uh, the big uh, problem here is that um, his band got voted to be the headliner of the 
music event after the ceremony and uh, everybody assumes it's a joke because he's uh, in a crazy death metal band who thing about uh, online bullying and that it's bad and that's pretty pretty nice a good message um but in the practice scene we see pretty well and that's one of the best things in this movie or at least one of the funniest things in the movie that um they're actually a playback band and we see them playing and then the, we see uh, her and her friend watching through the window and just in front of them we see a CD player with a CD spinning so it's hidden in plain sight but uh, yeah the drummer loses his stick and uh, everything falls apart <laughs> and at first I thought it's a mistake in the movie or what's going on here but no they're actually a playback band and it escalates more and more their stuff disappears his band members are too ashamed to perform because they actually have one year left at school so the um, club boss uh, so she decides that there's only one solution, he should just sing uh, a cappella and uh, he's like, yeah, sure, whatever, I'll do what you tell me. And um, yeah, the, the core of the story is that like, they have been in the same school, that's a little, uh, I would say a little bad translation here, like in the subtitles it says, um, we've been together for six years, isn't that great? Um, where well, I was like, hello, what's going on? Are they a couple or hey, what's this? But I checked here the uh, script and actually in the, in the original it says, Uchira Rokunen mo naji gakkojan. So we're We've been for six years in the same school together and um, that's the third of their life so they spent a long long time together but uh, for her that's a big thing and he seemingly is just like yeah yeah she's nice but whatever I do my metal stuff and yeah but because they've known each other for such a long time she can tell him yeah stop this, this attitude uh, being normal and uh, yeah in the in the end the big thing is like she wants him for herself so she's pretty happy that he basically makes fun or gives others the option or opportunity to make fun of him while she knows that uh, he's actually a pretty amazing guy and um, yeah she can keep him for herself by that but uh, of course at the end she needs to let go of this too and uh, let other people realize as well that he's a very very amazing dude and the main story here is the most confusing because it seems for the most part that there's actually no conflict no problem why is the story being told to us and um, that's the story of Yumi Kawai and Airu Kubozuka and they basically meet in the science room and have lunch together and she puts in these little flags of countries so um, he decided to recreate the UN and collect the uh, flags on a, on a shelf or something and um, yeah they just have a good time she plays tricks on him and uh, they seem to have a nice relationship and and she's supposed to give the speech about the graduation and also fine as so a teacher asks, hey could you include some information about the school and uh, she's like mm, yeah maybe if i have to <laughs> and yeah just um the library girl gets asked like why do you want to change the last few days and she says yeah I, I saw that she's supposed to give the speech and with her problems she still tries to move on so how can i be with my social anxiety and uh, pretend that's an issue and not try to move on from that so we're a little bit confused and then 
we realize that uh, he actually died, he fell out of a window and um, she has to somehow live with that and there's one thing where the movie actually tells you that this lunch scene is not in the present but it's a uh, past um when she enters a science room for the first time we see in the background quite blurry these flags and there are way more flags than the scene in the scene when he puts a new one on there but of course it's such a tiny detail that nobody will realize especially if you don't know what it's about and uh that's one of the things where I feel like, oh, if you know, you can see it. And uh, yeah, but I, I think it's pretty mean that a movie that um, supposedly tells a lot of things that happen parallel to each other. Um, yeah, uh, just uh, just throws in one thing that's actually in the past and you can't. You have no chance to realize that it's uh, really mean and yeah in the end there's some connection from this to the uh, music club and there's some connection like here because she gives the speech the other girl wants to um yeah change her personality or something so i i think it's not so disconnected from each other like the stories are not so disconnected for the basketball club members i think it's more like this idea about the building that's a little bit thematically but yeah they're, they're pretty pretty much apart um especially since uh, the end of the basketball club story basically happens um parallel to the music performance at central basically the central thing but in a different place so um yeah we, we have the sense that um these stories all happen in the same place at the same time but yeah there's not so much overlap with the characters actually interacting with each other but yeah i i don't think that's a, a bad thing why why should it be um yeah, it's more episodes about similar topics in the same situation and everybody has a similar thing to uh, handle and to deal with. So I, I don't think that's a real criticism. And yeah, some other interesting things here. Um, maybe uh, interesting in the script. Um, there are some things so usually japanese scripts are just dialogue with very little explanation what's actually happening and then this one maybe can you see it here there are just lines where there's nothing and seemingly this were left in for the actors to improvise so um yeah, they should just say whatever they feel like would be the most natural, uh, which I think is a very interesting approach because usually the, I mean the, the scriptwriters are usually not uh, teenagers, and I mean the actors for the most part probably as well, but they're much closer to that generation, so there's a little bit room left for them to improvise, which. Uh, yeah, and to make it maybe a little bit more natural. That's uh, very interesting. So uh, good, nice. Yeah, and um, anything else I want to say? No? Oh, yeah, of course. That's one, one thing that I think is pretty horrible and terrible. Um, like the scene where we realize that uh, Yumiko's boyfriend here um, died uh, fell off the school and it's not clear if it's um, yeah his wish or an accident we don't know um, I, will, I will guess from what we know it was an accident 
but um, yeah, just after this memory, suddenly, like be before we see her going up the stage, trying to give the speech, and then it just cuts, and then we see this memory, and after that we see the students going out with these roles with uh, their certificates and being happy and going out into the yard and celebrating and stuff and it's a quite horrible scene and yeah for, for, for me basically this whole last hour just completely messed me up emotionally there's so much depressing stuff going on and um, the music performance is pretty great he uh, sings um, Danny Boy that old Irish folk song and um, basically seems to be a song about a parent sending her son to war so a lot of like departure loss death and um, that basically um, yeah, this is basically pretty much what the director said about the movie here on the Saka website. Um, I will just quote here. I made this film with the feeling that the event of graduation in which a person is forcibly expelled from the world they have lived in, regardless of one's own intentions, with no possibility of returning once departed, parallels the concept of death in some ways. In the film, the girls grow into adulthood as they struggle and come to accept what is hard to accept. I believe the narrative transcendence, a mere high school story, prompts reflection on how each of us will live in the moment as we all move towards the end of life that will eventually come to all of us. I hope you enjoy it. Um, this last sentence is quite... Uh, yeah, uh, enjoy getting closer to the end of life. Uh, mm. <laughs> um, no, it's I, I completely agree with that. Um, and I think that's one thing that most people who watch this movie don't really feel like a lot of reviews. Are like, yeah, it's about graduation and things, and um, yeah, but but I completely agree. This is um, a very Heart level, very um, emotionally uh, challenging for me at least, and it's also like everything is over now. There's a little bit optimism, like stuff comes next, but uh, yeah, I, I guess especially this aspect of setting it in a small town somewhere in the countryside makes it uh, even worse because there's a much higher chance that you move on to a bigger place like Tokyo or something and it's all more definite and uh, yeah everything feels like it's over and like I said with the library girl who's just like oh my god I just learned to appreciate this place now it's gone and it's like completely gone so it's all quite heavy stuff presented in a very beautiful way. The movie is absolutely gorgeous to look at. Um, uh, soundtrack is there. It's a fitting. It's nothing super special, but fits the mood. Um, and we have some some lighter scenes, some more comedic scenes. That's very nice as well. But uh, yeah, it's easy type of high school movie that uh, hits surprisingly hard. Like I said, the first hour didn't really convince me the first few tries. <laughs> and um, but it's all just set up for the second hour that just yeah, made me feel very, very, very sad. <laughs> and um, yeah, I recommend to watch it and uh, yeah, just sit through the first hour, just to enjoy the setup for things to come and uh, yeah, wait for the end of the movie and therefore this video and uh, have a nice day. See you. Bye.